Hello, this is Steve. This is another video in a series on how to create generative art. In this video, we'll be looking at the clip function. The clip function can be used to put texture in shapes like this, or it can be used to overlap shapes and have different colors in the portion that's being overlapped. I've used the clipping function in three of my art projects, all to put texture within shapes. Here's the order of things. Here is down the rabbit hole. And here's tile study with this circle using the clip function. There are two versions of the clip function. One clip function comes with P5JS. The other clip function is native to JavaScript and it looks like this. And they each do different things. We'll start with the old clip function, the one that's native to JavaScript. What you would do is you make a shape and then call this clip function canvas get context 2d.clip and after you call that clip, clip function anything that's drawn after that is going to be within that shape and not outside of that shape. So you can see here I've drawn a red rectangle and then after clip function I made a blue circle and it only appears in here. But of course I'm going to want to draw other things that are not inside of this square so in order to stop the clip function, we need to pop, which means that we need to put a push and a pop around this whole section. The other thing to note about this clip function is that it only works on the most recent shape. So here I've drawn two rectangles. I drew this one first, and then I drew this one, called the clip function, and then I made the circle, but the circle doesn't appear in this rectangle. It only appears in the most recent rectangle. So something to keep in mind. Down here is another example of the old clip function. I drew a circle, then I drew a bunch of low alpha circles, and they were contained within this circle. For the overlapping colors using the old clip function, I'm drawing this circle first, and it's a red circle. You can see that here, red, and that's the red circle. Then I fill green and I draw another circle. That's this one right here. Then after that, I draw a clip function and I draw another circle, exactly the same circle where the red was. So it's drawing a blue circle right here, but because it's clipped, it only appears in this area. I'm not gonna go over this example in detail, but I'll share it with you. It uses an array to first put information about these shapes into the array. Where's the X and the Y? What's its rotation? What size is it? Then after that you go through the array, pull information out about what shape you're going to draw that's going to be clipped. For instance, we draw this square and we clip it. Then we go through all of the items. This is a nested loop, so that square would be drawn here. And then all of the other items on the canvas are drawn and appear within this square. So this square is being drawn, and this circle is being drawn, and this circle is being drawn, and this circle is being drawn. But the only part of these that actually appears is these parts that are visible within the square. And it's actually drawing all of these, but of course none of these appear within the square. These are all being drawn in this first for loop. I'm also providing you with some simple textures that you can put behind shapes. For this crosshatch example, I am pushing, translating to this spot on the canvas. I rotate because I want the crosshatch to have different rotations. I draw the circle, I call the clip function, and then I'm going through a for loop making some low alpha rectangles. I've got no fill making 500 rectangles in different positions. And after I've drawn all my texture, then I pop and move on to another shape. All of these textures use the same technique. You have a for loop and you draw a whole bunch of shapes in different spots with some kind of low alpha shape. These are little squares, these are curves, these are circles, these are also circles, these are straight lines. Now let's look at the clipping function that comes with P5JS. We'll look at this green shape first. There is a push and then there's this begin clip function. There's going to be an end clip function as well. So there's begin clip and then there's two rectangles being drawn, but they're invisible. 
One rectangle is here and one rectangle is here. I'll show those with a low alpha outline. After you call the end clip function, then whatever is drawn after that is going to be within these invisible rectangles. So after I call the end clip function, I draw a green circle and then I pop. Popping turns off the clipping so that I can draw shapes outside of these rectangles. So some differences between these two clip functions. This one has an advantage in that we've drawn two rectangles and the circle is appearing within both rectangles. Whereas with this one, the circle only appeared in the most recently drawn rectangle. The disadvantage or difference is that this rectangle here is not drawn at all. So if you wanted to have a rectangle here like this, you would have to draw the rectangle before you call the clip function. So I've done that. Let me pull those in. So here's the rectangle drawn just with a white fill and the green circle is on top of it. Now also notice that this rectangle has an outline here, whereas this rectangle does not. If you wanted outlines to appear here and here, then you'd have to do a no fill rectangle on top of this after the clip function. So here's what that would look like if you drew rectangle outlines afterwards. So to get something that looks like this, you would have to draw this rectangle three times. One before the begin clip or the fill, one within the clip to actually do the clipping, and then a third one after the pop to do the outline. This example in yellow is the same as this green example. I'm just showing that you can have two rectangles separated and you can see there's a gap here. One other aspect with the clip function. If you call the begin clip function, there's one argument you can put in here curly bracket invert colon true, close curly bracket, and that is going to do the opposite of what this does. So here we push, we begin clip inverted, then we draw these two rectangles here and here, then we end the clip, then we draw the circle. This is a pink or lavender colored circle. But instead of being within the rectangles, it's only drawn outside of the rectangles. And then we pop, which means that we'll now be able to draw shapes on top of this. This in the light blue is another example of the inverted clip function. We begin clip inverted. We draw the two rectangles here and here, and then we draw the light blue circle. So what's interesting here is where these two rectangles overlap, they seem to cancel each other out. I don't know why this isn't empty rectangle right here, but that's the way it works. I remembered one more project that uses the clip function. This is HexaSketch, and you can see there's clipping here and here. One more thing before we go. I'm recording this right before January 2024, and in January every year there is a month-long generative art codathon. This is called January. It's led by Peter Pasma with help from friends, and there are prompts every day uh, to make something generative. So January 1st is particles, lots of them. January 2nd, no pallets. So it's a challenge for every day. And if you make something from the challenge, you can post it to social media with the hashtag January. I'll leave a link to this website in the video description. That's it for this video. There'll be links in the video description. In the next video, we're going to be looking at WebGL and 3D graphics. As always, I love to read your comments. Like the video if you did. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.